Hey Georgie, this is Ryan with TrendLizard.com. Thanks for signing up at TrendLizard.com and welcome to the community. We, we'd love to have you. I think you're going to like what we do here, bringing Elliott Wave to the masses. You sent me an email with three tickers that you want me to take a look at. We're going to run through those uh, for you tonight. We're going to start with Boeing, then take a look at advanced micro devices, and then take a look at Carnival. So first up is Boeing. Our data goes back to 1980, uh, and this is what we're looking at on a very long-term time frame. Boeing has been in a perpetual uptrend over that time. It's given us a nice five-wave advance into the 2000 high and then a big three-wave pullback. Uh, once it completed that in 2009, kind of the same thing the S&P 500 did, it embarked on another large five-wave advance up into the 2019 high and then it has been getting crushed since then, trading, trading from about 450 all the way down below 100 before uh, giving us a bounce uh, more recently in 2020. So um, that's the overall outlook. Overall, it's been bullish. Uh, obviously, things have shifted quite a bit in 2020 and in 2019 as well uh, to make it very clear that the big five-wave advance off the 2009 uh, low had completed. So let's go ahead and just zoom in on this five-wave move off the 2009 low. This is it just to show you a little more detail. Very clear move to the upside. Clearly completed, completed here in 2019, and then you had this large pullback. So the last time that I did a video on Boeing, we were interested in this recovery in the hopes that it was going to leave behind a major low and turn to the upside. Things have developed in a way that it doesn't look as bullish as it once did, and I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So if this is the advance off of March's low, uh, when I did that last video, I think it was in early June, and we had this breakout move here and had this potential that we were going to get ourselves a nice five-wave advance to the upside uh, to give us a trendy move to turn the trend back up. Instead, it pulled back, it stalled, it chopped around, and it has moved below 158, which was the level at that time that I identified as being a key level that it needed to stay above. So uh, this is our best effort and the best way we can label it as a trendy move. And this does not look like a legitimate uh, labeling. This looks like a very hard effort for us to try to force a bullish labeling on this chart. And it doesn't fit. It doesn't work. I'll show you what does fit and what does work. Uh, uh, calling this a three-wave <clears throat> ABC move to the upside uh, that completed in, in June. Uh, followed by a large counter trend pullback in a larger B wave, uh, another ABC move to the downside for a wave B. So overall, what we're seeing happening here is a larger counter trend move that is not yet complete. So wave A to the upside. In wave B, it's possible that it completed in uh, just this past week, uh, looks like last Thursday or Friday, and that it's starting back to the upside again. It's hard to, to be certain just because it's a brand new move, but it's Definitely found some strength off of the recent lows, and it's possible because it set a new low. Um, this could be a C wave down to complete this larger B wave. Um, the bottom line is, I do believe Boeing's going to make its way back up to June's high. I know you said in your email that you kind of uh, nailed the high and bought it around 230 or somewhere around there. Uh, we're going to get back there. Uh, this this chart clearly says we're going to get back there. Uh, and the main reason I'm confident in that is that this pullback off of June's high, if the trend had turned down again, this would be a trendy move. And this does not look like a trendy move. It looks like a choppy, messy move. I can't guarantee you that this B wave down completed. We might get another turn down. It might get a little bit sharper to the downside. But overall, this definitely looks like a B wave, and it definitely looks like we should get a C wave to the upside. Um, let's go ahead and just look at this little little um, push that we're getting in over the past couple days here. This is it. No clear way to label it. It looks trendy, but it's hard to say yet. It's obviously still in progress. What we do know is that it'll stay above 153 if the low is in and if that big C wave up has already begun. If it moves below 153, then you know that it's still in this B wave down and, and just a matter of time before that C wave up begins. So I, I think there's some hope on a shorter term time frame. Unfortunately, the entire recovery looks like a counter trend move. There, therefore, I don't think it's a good long term buying opportunity. If we go back out to that long term time frame, hard to say exactly how it fits, but if this is a counter trend move to the upside, it has to mean that the pullback off the 2019 high is not yet over, right? So it could be an X wave, it could be a B wave, whatever the case may be. At some point, we have to think it's going to go back to that 2020 low. Uh, but of course, before we get that, uh, we should first get that C wave up that, that revisits the high, probably gets above that 2020 high 
before it's over. So there is Boeing. I hope that's helpful. I think with your position, you will have an opportunity to exit uh, somewhere near where you entered and maybe uh, better. But again, the overall recovery in 2020 looks like a counter trend move. So let's move on. Let's go ahead and take a look at advanced micro devices. So here it is. Uh, this data dates back to about 1983. They were incepted back in 1983. Just a big choppy mess of a move right here. We could spend all all bunch of time trying to label it. Doesn't matter. It is all one big counter trend move. The only thing that matters is what has happened off that low recorded in 2015. Obviously, there was a fundamental change that took place at that time. Since then, it's gone from a couple bucks all the way up to 95. It's pulled back more recently, but obviously the trend has turned up. It's broken above all previous highs and all that type of stuff uh, looks very bullish. So let's go ahead and just zoom in on this trendy action that's taken uh, place to the upside here. Uh, here it is. It looks like an advancing trendy move that is not yet complete. In fact, I have us still in a third wave up, probably a big black wave three up uh, that itself has a lot of work to do before it's completed. Uh, if we uh, look kind of just at what's happened off of the 2018 high. You have a first, a second wave, and then a third wave that's extended, and you should get a fourth and a fifth, and that would just complete this third wave. So we, we see a lot of potential. At some point, we should see a very clear five-wave advance in the black time frame, basically, uh, to the upside. So it looks like it's it's a long ways off before recording any major high on the long-term time frame. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer on that action off the 2018 low since that is the current trend that we're dealing with. This is it. Just wanted to provide a little bit more detail for you to show you that it is definitely a trendy move and everything counts out very well. And that's why we are going with the labeling that we did. Um, so again, we appear to be in a third wave advance in the third of a third, uh, the blue third wave currently uh, within this larger black third wave. So uh, very bullish stuff. It looks like it's going to continue higher. Currently, we appear to be in the fifth wave of this third wave. So look, uh, currently, we're looking for a five wave advance off of the 2020 low. Uh, a pretty clear action in 2020. We had a, a nice up leg, counter trend pullback, another nice up leg, and we appear to be in the fourth wave of this five wave advance off the 2020 low. So let's go ahead and zoom in and look a little bit closer at that. This is that advance off the 2020 low. Again, one wave uh, up, first wave up, second wave pullback, another another nice trendy five wave advance for wave three. And we are currently in that fourth wave pullback right now. It doesn't appear to be over. The pullback off of September's high does not yet appear to be over. It appears as if we've completed an A wave down. We've had a B wave sideways. We should get another down leg for wave four. Uh, at which point, once we get that larger clear three-wave pullback that ends somewhere in this yellow support area, we're going to be looking for another up leg, a fifth-wave advance, maybe something comparable to what we saw off of March's low. Uh, generally, we look for wave fives to be similar to the first wave of the same uh, wave pattern. So uh, we are bullish there. Let's go ahead and zoom in and look a little bit more at that pullback off of September's high. This is why we don't think it's over yet. That first down leg looks like a trendy five-wave move. And then you have counter trend price action to the side, uh, sideways counter trend uh, price action here. Uh, looks a lot like QQQ or something like that. So they'll probably track fairly closely here. Uh, but the expectation is we will get another down leg to complete this pullback. Um, if we get a move above 87 uh, straight from here, you'd have to consider the possibility that the uptrend has already resumed. Um, but as is, uh, there's nothing to suggest that it has just because all of this price action does look like counter trend movement. And this pullback is pretty small so far uh, compared to the same pullback in the wave two position uh, back yeah, off of April's high into June's low. So I think it's going to get bigger before it ends. Again, should find a low somewhere in the yellow area and then get a nice fifth wave up to the upside. You said you day trade this thing quite a bit. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that gives you some context to work with uh, heading forward. But I think in the very near term, you are looking at a larger pullback. So. There is AMD. Uh, the last one you request was CCL, uh, Carnival. Uh, as you noted, we've taken a look at RCL before, Royal Cruise Lines, uh, something very similar. Uh, and obviously, it has had a very bad time uh, in recent years. It's been absolutely wrecked. And really, if you look at it, you know, it's basically tested, or right now, let's see, it's trading about 15, which is levels that it was at back in 1998. So uh, there's been a couple of lost decades here on CCL. On a very long-term time frame, uh, what's happened is, is the moves to the upside have been trendy five-wave moves, and the pullbacks have been counter-trend three-wave moves. 
and again you get another five wave move here but this thing this this decline that's happened uh really wipes out any bullish thing that you could take away from this chart i mean it's it's definitely been a huge beatdown that's taken place and it's had a huge impact and it's hard to see bullish potential in any way here um, but let's go ahead and zoom in let's focus on the decline that's taken place over the past uh year or so uh, and this is an, uh, the main reason why I am not bullish at this time. Um, the down leg in 2020 is a clear five wave move to me. Even maybe more important than the fact that this being was a trendy down move in 2020 is the clear counter trend nature of the recovery off of April's low. <clears throat> Since it re revisited that low that was recorded in March, most things put in a low here, but CCL was weak enough that it moved back to this low. <clears throat> so you can see here, Everything about this looks like a counter trend move to the upside in 2020. Um, the overall recovery, that first leg into June's high, is a clear three wave move. If you look just at wave A here, this also looks like a three wave move. There's really nothing that can be mistaken as a trendy move to the upside here in 2020. Uh, from there, uh, it's pulled back, and you're kind of getting the same thing. You're getting more choppy, uh, less clear price action. Which kind of leaves you into a, as a similar position as BA, where it appears to be a large B wave down. Not the resumption of the downtrend, but just a larger B wave that at some point should give way to a C wave advance that moves back to that high that was recorded in June. And you said that this was another one that you bought closer to the high than you would have liked uh, and kind of left you hanging. I think there will be a moment of, re of redemption for you as this develops. Uh, once this B wave ends and you get that C wave advance, you should have an opportunity I don't think wave B down is complete yet, just judging on what we're seeing here, and I'll show you why. Let's just go ahead and zoom in on this downside action in September. Here it is. Uh, it, we're getting a nice bounce. A lot of things have bounced fairly nicely over the past couple days, uh, but we're just seeing no indication that it's over. For one, you're getting a trendy down leg in September. Uh, this bounce hasn't even retraced a Fibonacci portion of that down leg yet. Uh, and then if, you, if we take a step back out, you see that this B wave did not move back down to July's low. Normally at the end of a counter trend pullback like a B wave, we would expect a new low for that pullback to be set in ending pattern as, as it's so called uh, before price turns back up. So we're not seeing either of those signs to suggest this is over. Uh, we should see a little bit more downward movement, ideally a new low for the pullback off of June's high. Uh, but then once you start seeing some strength to the upside, uh, that looks more purposeful and trendy, that is going to be what we expect to be a C-wave advance back up to June's high. So I don't think all hope is lost. Um, if it does continue straight higher from here and starts moving above 1675, you'd have to consider the possibility that wave C up has already begun. Uh, but again, it's not the best fit at this time, and there are other possibilities, like you could just have it chop around and then give you the ending move to wave B before C goes up. So on a very near-term near time frame, I wouldn't recommend trying to get too fancy with this guy, but I think generally speaking, you can't expect a C-wave up to head back up towards June's low before it's all said and done. So uh, that's what we're looking at, Georgie. Again, thanks for being a member at TrendLizard.com. Uh, I, I do believe you like what we do, and I'm here to answer any questions you ever have uh, about any of this stuff, and we'll just keep using Elliott Wave to figure out the probabilities and where stocks are going to head from here so that we can position accordingly. So have a wonderful evening. Uh, I'll talk to you again very soon. Take care.